Hi everybody, I'm Christina and this video is going to be a documentation of my experience with getting IVIG infusions for myasthenia gravis. So my guess is if you're here watching this video, you either have myasthenia gravis, you're getting IVIG infusions, or you know somebody who has myasthenia gravis or is getting IVIG infusions, uh, or you just know me, in which case, hello. <laughs> so I'm only going to do a little quick overview about MG and IVIG, because really the point of this video is to showcase my experience. So uh, I'll kind of just do a quick little overview of what's, what my conditions are, and then we'll dive into the experience. So myasthenia gravis is a disease of the neuromuscular junction where it's basically like your nerves and your muscles don't communicate properly. So if you don't have enough juice getting from your nerves to your muscles, your muscles just don't contract properly, which means they get weaker and weaker the more you use them. So the fatigue is not just the kind of general fatigue that comes with chronic illness, although I get that too, <laughs> but the fatigue is in specific muscle groups. My MG is generalized, which means it affects all my muscles just about, unfortunately. <laughs> Not everybody has generalized. Some people have just ocular, where it only affects your eye muscles. Mine started, oh, I shouldn't say it started ocular. My first symptom was ocular, but it was always generalized because I had issues with swallowing because your throat muscles aren't strong enough to push food and water and things down your throat. But I have issues with my arms and my legs and my neck and my jaw from talking and chewing and things. Um, it affects pretty much my entire body. So one of the treatments for myasthenia gravis and one of the treatments for a lot of other conditions, autoimmune conditions, is IVIG infusions. So the IV part of IVIG is a literal IV in your arm and the IG part is immunoglobulin, which is a type of antibody. Um, it's basically infusing the antibodies of healthy people into the body of people who don't have healthy antibodies like myself. <laughs> So the infusions happen over a period of days, over a period of hours per day. And then the idea is that once your body has kind of gotten rid of your messed up antibodies and has the new antibodies infused in, you have fewer symptoms of whatever disease it is that you're treating. So this video is going to be my experience with my first two doses of IVIG. There's generally a loading dose first, which is usually a five day dose that's smaller than the dose that you're usually going to get in the future. And it's done over a longer period of time to get your body accustomed to it. And then afterwards, so my loading dose uh, was suppo supposed to be, you'll see what happened with that, <laughs> supposed to be five days, uh, three to four hours per day. And then my regular dose is once a month for five-ish hours a day. Um, but this did not exactly go as planned, which you'll see in the video. <laughs> so keep watching. I take you guys through my entire experience from the day before the IVIG all the way through a little more than a week after my second IVIG infusion. So we can see everything from the experience start to be finished, all of the, everything that goes into it, the, the nurses, the infusion. Um, it, I'm getting infusions in my home, by the way, which is different than going to an infusion center. It's a little bit nicer. So you'll see that entire experience and then we'll talk about uh, the results. So thank you for watching. I hope this is helpful for you guys and uh, come on along with my IVIG journey with me. So it's Tuesday, officially one day before my first loading dose of IVIG. I'm supposed to be hydrating a lot today, so I got water bottles. I already had another water bottle. I already had another water bottle, <laughs> so I'm gonna be super hydrated for tomorrow. Um, they said to drink way more than normal to make sure that my veins were hydrated so they don't have to get stuck a thousand times because it's not always easy to stick my veins. Um, my medicine is being shipped to my job, not my house. So tomorrow morning, I have to go pick up the medicine, which is being refrigerated at my job, um, take it out, get it to room temperature a few hours before the infusion starts, and then my IVIG starts at two o'clock. The nurse will come. So I will take you guys with me uh, tomorrow. Morning, it's IVIG day, day number one of five of the infusions. The uh, infusions were supposed to start at two o'clock today, but just as I started filming this, I got a call from the nurse who said she's gonna come at one o'clock, uh, which means I need to go because the medication is actually at my job. My coworker refrigerated it and I have to take it out of the fridge two hours before infusion starts. I take my medication today. I'm supposed to take everything as normal. So I took my morning uh, Mestinon. I'm due for another one in a couple of hours. I took my prednisone. I've been drinking water. The nurse said to drink three bottles of water before she gets here. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll film and show you as much as I can. If not, I'll catch you guys up at the end of the day. We'll see how I'm feeling. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm excited because I feel like this is gonna work and help. 
Uh, but I'm also nervous because first of all, it's a person that I don't know coming into my house and sitting here and staring at me for like four hours, checking on me every half hour. Uh, privacy is not a thing. <laughs> and also, I don't know how I'm going to feel during the infusion. Um, I have to pre-medicate with 650 milligrams of Tylenol and 25 milligrams of Benadryl, which is like OTC stuff to prevent side effects. And then every half hour during the infusion, she's going to check my temperature and blood pressure and the infusion rate and make sure it's all good. Uh, cause sometimes side effects can happen if the, if it's infusing too quickly. So day one, I don't know what to expect, but I'll show you guys as much as I can as we go. So bye. Okay. I'm at work. Quick update from my uh, messy office before I jump on my call. I took the medication out of the refrigerator. There were five bags that came in the shipment. Um, I'm assuming one for each day. So it's about two, almost a little more than two hours before the infusion is going to start. So I'm going to let that get to room temperature. Um, it has all the info on it about my pre-meds and stuff that I need to do. And there was two big boxes. One of them had the five days of meds and then the other one I'll show you now. So I don't know why I didn't expect an absolutely massive box, but here it is, the absolutely massive box. <laughs> uh, the other one that had the five days of the IVIG was just as big. This one's got like sharps and syringes and gloves and like all of the actual like supplies and things. Um, and I don't know if this is just for my first five day loading dose or if this is for my every month maintenance after that. I don't know, there's a lot of stuff in here. This is a big box. <laughs> So these are the instructions for the Octagam infusion, um, four hours a day for five days. And that's just this month. Every month after that is going to be two days and I'm sure the timing is going to change. And the goal is to kind of figure out the speed at which I tolerate the infusion. So they start slow, slowly increase, and then we'll see how it goes. This one is at room temperature now. I did take it out about two hours ago. Uh, they said to give it about two hours before the infusion so it's not super cold when they start. Um, and the nurse should be here any minute. So I'll show you guys as much as I can. So this is my IV in. It's connected to what I like to call a little backpack. And there's a pump in the little backpack that pumps the IVIG through in the speed that's right for you. And my speed was pretty slow this day. The backpack was nice because I just got to wear it and walk around. I also had a little blood pressure cuff that I kept on. And even though the IV was kind of flapping around a little bit, the fact that it had the little pouch was nice because I could just tuck it away. Um, I had way more energy than expected. So I was like making sandwiches and walking around. I didn't have too many side effects. I didn't feel sleepy. I felt totally normal. So yeah, it was a pretty successful day one, but I will update you on what happened later. All right, so IVIG day one is done. I'm very tired <laughs> and I'm very hungry. We ordered food, it's on the way. Um, but really quickly, it was um, it was a good experience. I didn't really have a lot of side effects. Um, my first day was about three hours and 45 minutes for the infusion. Um, and I still, have the, I still have the thing in so that it's easy to access tomorrow. They don't have to restick me every single time because my veins are not fun to stick. I got one real good one and it's in there now. <laughs> Um, and I can't get this wet and it's hopefully going to be okay to sleep on and everything. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, it was almost four hours. I was tired. I felt like I have kind of a headache coming on that started more towards the end. And headache is a super common side effect of IVIG. Most people get it from what I understand. I haven't gotten any other side effects yet. Um, some people get like nausea and vomiting and all kinds of stuff. I don't usually get side effects from medication. So I'm hoping it's true from the infusions too. We'll see. Um, so yeah, day one in the bag, feeling good. Um, day two tomorrow is going to start in the morning. I will show you guys as much as I can of that as well. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling okay. I'm really ready to stuff my face with food and sleep. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> so it is 8.30 and I already completely passed out of sleep on the couch and had to come upstairs. I am so, so tired. Um, so I'm going to go get a full night's sleep. Uh, I'm so tired. I'm not even washing my makeup off, which is stressful, but it'll be fine. I'm lucky if I get a bonnet on my hair before I go to sleep. <laughs> um, infusion in the morning is at 10. So I got to get up early, take the medication out of the fridge at like eight. Uh, and one thing I forgot to mention, I can't have caffeine. Uh, I can't do drink anything that's dehydrating like caffeine when I have to drink water all the time to keep my veins and shit hydrated. So, uh, I'm tired and I hope I sleep.
good night. Morning, day two of IVIG. Uh, after yesterday, I feel totally fine. I the headaches gone. I don't have any side effects or anything like that. Uh, I feel like it's a normal morning. Took my medicine on already. Did not take my prednisone yet because uh, I do that with food. Uh, the only thing is this friggin' thing hurts so bad. <laughs> um, it's still in. I kept it covered while I was sleeping. Um, but every time I bend my arm, it feels like I'm being stabbed. Uh, and I am because there's a little needle stabbing me in the vein. So <laughs> I think after today, I'm going to have them take this out and then just re-stick me tomorrow. Uh, maybe on the other arm, even though I have like a massive cat scratch over here. I think my vein's okay. <laughs> um, so it's almost 8 o'clock. I'm going to take the medicine out of the fridge to... I almost said defrost <laughs> uh, to, to warm, to get to room temperature, whatever. So I'm going to do that. I'll let you guys know how it goes later. So infusion day two, I had to take the medication out of the fridge two hours before, but I found out from the pharmacist later that you can actually do as long as overnight to defrost because if the IVIG is cold, it actually can lead to more side effects. So I had my pump again this day. There is... A little window where the nurse can look at the pump and see how much time is left, how quickly it's infusing, and it was just really nice again to have that pump to kind of walk around. I also had my little infusion buddy with me. This is Sunny. <laughs> and everything went pretty well for day two until the middle of the night. So I felt so good after day two of IVIG that I didn't even make an update. I just like went to Target and made dinner and did whatever and then I woke up at four o'clock in the morning with the most splitting, pounding, throbbing headache of all time. Um, I couldn't walk by myself. Kevin had to hold me to walk down the hall and it was so bad that I had to call an ambulance. Kevin called an ambulance and now I'm in the ER. It's almost noon now. Uh, I was allegedly supposed to start my day three infusions at 1.30 but that probably won't happen now. Um, since I had some kind of reaction to it. Um, IVIG headaches are a thing, um, but this was really bad to the point that I like couldn't walk. So here I am in the ER. I talked to a neurology resident so far after I got all my fluids and meds, and then the whole neurology team's gonna come to town in a little bit. So I'll update later if I can. All right, I'm finally getting discharged. I got here at five o'clock in the morning. It is now eight o'clock at night. I haven't eaten, I haven't drank anything. They gave me a ton of fluids. Um, I had a CT scan in my head. I had an MRI of my head. Um, something else I don't even remember. I still don't feel great. <laughs> um, but they ruled out all of the um, like really negative things like the brain bleeding and anything like that. And they narrowed it down to, yeah, just a bad reaction to IVIG that triggered a like massive massive migraine um, so I get to go home and sleep in my own bed finally I asked Kevin to bring me a gigantic water bottle because I am so <laughs> thirsty uh, I'm probably not even gonna eat though I'm just gonna go straight to bed um, so yeah I gotta get dressed get ready to go Kevin's gonna come pick me up um, I probably won't film again because I'll be ready to pass out and hit the bed as soon as I get out of here um, but I will update I don't know when, whenever I feel better, I have a feeling I'm going to sleep most of tomorrow. So yeah, this video did not exactly go the way that I planned it. Ugh. That throbbing just keeps coming back and I can't wait to go to sleep and get rid of it. Ugh. So yeah, didn't expect this video to go this way. I thought I was having like a happy, lovely IVIG experience. Now they don't know if I'm going to be able to continue it or not. Um, so I'm going to have to follow up with my neurologist and see if that's something that they want to do and just slow the infusion or if we're just gonna pretend this never happened and move on which is a kind of bummer because I was really feeling excited about getting benefits from this so we'll see if I'm feeling okay later or tomorrow I'll update again but I'm still not feeling good also I haven't been able to take any of my medicine today so I'm supposed to take my prednisone in the morning, which I couldn't because it was here in the morning. I was supposed to take my Mestinon every four to six hours, and I couldn't because it was here and I didn't have it, and they didn't let me drink anything anyway, so I wouldn't have been able to take it. So I'm sure that I feel shittier than I actually need to, 
um, because I'm not taping my medicine. And prednisone is not a medicine that you can like skip a dose without getting a headache, at least for me. So, all right, I'm gonna get dressed, get out of the hospital, and I'll see you guys later. One eternity later. So, haven't made an update in a while. It's been over a month since I ended up in the ER after my IVIG. Uh, and nothing really happened after that. Um, there was kind of some back and forth between me talking to my neurology office to figure out what happened and what to do next time. And I am continuing IVIG. Uh, I actually just started again yesterday. So what happened was after I left the ER, talked to the neurology office and, uh, and the infusion company, and they basically said they think the rate of infusion was too fast. I did so well the first day. It was three hours and 45 minutes the first day. I did so well, the nurse on the second day was like, oh, we'll speed it up and we can do three hours. Um, and it's funny, she even said, we could slow it down, but I think you'll be fine. And I was like, yeah, what do I know? You're the nurse. <laughs> um, I, not fine. I was not fine. Um, I spent 15 hours in the ER. I had to get an MRI. I had to get two CT scans of my head to make sure there was no brain bleeding and things like that. Um, they ruled out all the scary stuff and basically just, you know, bad reaction to IVIG, the most massive migraine of all time. Um, headaches and migraines are normal after IVIG and I kind of expected it. I've had migraines before. They suck, but I know how to deal with them. I got my first migraine when I was like eight. Um, fortunately, I haven't had them in a while, but I was like, I can deal with that if that happens. This was the mother of all migraines. <laughs> it, my head, and you can see kind of in the last clip, my head was just throbbing. And when I woke up at 4 a.m., it was throbbing so bad that with every throb, my head was jerking with every, oh God, it was so bad. Um, I had trouble walking on my own. My husband had to walk me down the hall to the bathroom. Um, I couldn't walk out to the car so he could drive me to ER. Um, so he called an ambulance to have me taken out. It was, it was intense. Um, so yeah, after all that, what they decided was I'm going to continue the IVIG not doing the five day loading dose. We're just going to call that a wash and go straight to the monthly, um, the monthly dose, which is two days with a higher dose, but they're going to slow the speed down a lot. So they said, I don't know what these numbers mean, but they said that my speed was at a hundred on the first day and 120 the second day. Again, don't know the unit of measurement. Don't know what that means, but they slowed me down to 80. So comparatively, even without understanding these numbers, that feels more comfortable. Um, and then also when I was in the ER, because I had the massive migraine, um, and it hurt so bad, they gave me Toradol, which is my understanding is it's like a heavy duty painkiller that they use for migraines and things like that. So they also gave me Toradol with the IVIG to prevent the headaches and things like that. And I think that's only happening this month and then hopefully next month I won't need it. Uh, but we'll see how I tolerate this one. So. All that happened, they approved the Toradol with the infusion, they approved the slower speed two days in a row. I was getting 35 grams a day for the loading dose that never really finished, and I'm getting 45 grams a day now. So yesterday was day one of attempt number two of IVIG. Uh, I was kind of just feeling all over the place, so I didn't really take a whole lot of videos, but I'll try to show you stuff today. Um, they did the 80 speed, it took almost five hours, which kind of sucked, but I felt fine. The Toradol was an injection. Um, apparently you can do an intramuscular or an intravenous. Mine, I got the injection and then the IVIG. I still have my, forgot I was wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> I'll show you later. I still have the IV in, which is way more comfortable this month than it was last month. Um, but that helped a lot. I took my Tylenol and my Benadryl ahead of time, drank a ton of water, got the Toradol injection. I felt so good. I was like, cooking and cleaning while the infusion was happening. They give you that little backpack that I showed you guys earlier. At least I call it a little backpack. <laughs> so I was like running around the kitchen. I'm like washing pots and pans and making soup and stuff and cutting vegetables. So I was feeling really good. Same thing happened where I got really sleepy during the first day. And then during the, dur or during the first like, I don't know, maybe hour or so. And then later I felt totally fine no bad reaction. I did get a tiny bit of a headache later in the day, but it literally was the kind of headache that like normally I wouldn't even take painkillers for. Um, the only reason why I took painkillers is because I didn't want it to turn into that massive headache. <laughs> so I took Tylenol, went to bed, totally fine. Um, but I am looking forward to today. So it should take 
another five hours or so today and then I'll be done for the month and then hopefully I'll start to feel better since this is going to be the first full dose that I get um, I'm really excited about just potentially feeling better overall um, oh one other thing I wanted to mention I'm feeling a little bit weak today not anywhere specific just all over like everything is a little bit harder to do um, yeah so I'm sure that's an IVIG side effect which is also normal also not concerned about it I haven't gotten any of these scary side effects or anything like that so we'll see I'll take you along as much as I can for day two so second month of IVIG, the nurse has to flush the IV before they can start the infusion. There's actually a clip from day two, it's a little out of order, but they leave the IV in and then just flush it every day before they put the infusion in. And then this is the first day I had my little backpack again and the same leopard print leggings I wore last month. <laughs> so I felt really good, I was really active again. But then the second day they did not have a little backpack with a pump in it for me, so I had to literally drip the IV from my ceiling fan. So I was tethered to the ceiling fan for five and a half hours. And then I had another reaction. Well, I did not have a smooth IVIG experience this time. <laughs> I had so many high hopes. Um, I'm feeling better now, but I've literally just been in this bed for 24 hours with like a throbbing splitting headache just crying and throwing up um so that friggin sucked um so i had the i had the ivig everything was okay mostly okay um my chest and my throat started feeling a little tight at one point so the nurse had to slow the infusion down even more even though i was already on a super slow rate so it took like five and a half hours I think on day two and a little less than five hours on day one and then a couple hours after after that I had a headache my husband was like go to bed I was trying to do stuff he was like go to bed <laughs> so I went to bed um, and it just was bad it was the same exact kind of throbbing headache that I had before when I went to the ER but not nearly as bad I guess the Toradol helped and the whatever the Tylenol and stuff um, but yeah, it sucked. I literally have been in bed for 24 hours. I just ate for the first time all day for about uh, about 20 minutes ago. So yeah, I don't know how I'll feel after. I don't know if I'll get good results from this IVIG. Honestly, at this point, it's kind of weird to say, but I hope I don't get good results from this only because I can't do this every month. Like, I cannot be going through this. Like, I feel so shitty like this is the first time that I've even been able to have lights on in the past 24 hours I have not washed my face I have not taken a shower like I am a mess I can't do 24 hours of excruciating pain and vomiting every month if I just I don't know so I hope this shit doesn't work quite honestly <laughs> um but yeah I'll let you all know if I actually get benefits from this IVIG again don't know how I feel about it. If it's going to help me feel better, I don't know if I can go through this every month just to feel better, which sucks to say. I almost feel like I would rather just adapt my life to fit my ability level versus putting myself through this excruciating pain every single month forever. I can't. I'm done. I'm going to go sleep. That's it. Bye. <laughs> Okay, so it's almost exactly 48 hours from when my death headache started, um, and I, for the first time, feel like an actual human again. I was able to take a shower, uh, which I needed so badly. When the IV is in for the IVIG, I have a little bruises from where it was, um, you can't get it wet or take a shower while it's in for the two days. So Thursday morning, I took a shower. Thursday and Friday, I got the IVIG. Saturday and Sunday, complete shit in bed the entire weekend. Happy New Year's. I spent New Year's in bed crying and throwing up because of this IVIG. So obviously not excited about this treatment. Um, I have to talk to my neurologist again. I actually talked to a friend of mine who also has MG who has been getting IVIG for like 14 years and she said she went through the same thing um, and she gave me advice for things they had to switch up for her. So I got to talk to my neurologist and figure out what to do because like I said I cannot do this every month 
forever. <laughs> Whatever they have to do to get the side effects to go away, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, but I, I, I can't keep doing it if I'm going to get the same kind of migraine all the time. Like, it puts me out for days. Um, I'll update if I feel any better since this is the first time I got a full dose. My neurologist said it should take about a week for it to kick in and then after that I should feel the effects of it. I know that's not the case for some people but we'll see. So yeah, that's that. I'm gonna uh, finish my hair and go to bed. Good night. Okay, it has been one week and four days since my last infusion, my second infusion. Um, and this is the first time that I've actually gotten a full dose in my body because the loading dose that I was supposed to get was supposed to be five whole days. I conked out after two and ended up in the ER, so I didn't get the full dose in my body. So now that I have the full dose in my body for the first time, and it's been more than a week, um, it's working. <laughs> and I know I said before, I was like, I don't want this shit to work because it hurts so bad. But now I feel like I just want to figure out how to not get side effects so I can keep doing this. Um, and it worked relatively quickly. By Monday, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I still felt like shit and I was in bed all day. But by Monday, I noticed that I could go longer between taking my Mestadon and I still felt okay. And then kind of as things went throughout the week, I was noticing that I would just like forget to take my Mestadon. Now, I did not have an active week. I sat through most of the week. I wasn't standing, I wasn't walking. I'm curious to test it out once I feel a little bit better and have more energy. Um, but the biggest thing that I noticed, it has been a whole week, almost, yeah, a whole solid week that I have not gotten food stuck in my throat. I have not choked while drinking a glass of water and I'm able to take pills, like multiple pills, swallow them at the same time. And that's something I've not been able to do for a long time because swallowing is one of the issues that I have with my MG when your throat muscles are just physically not strong enough to push things all the way down properly and they get stuck. I, pre this IVIG, I was getting food stuck in my throat almost every single day for the past two years. Um, and I was like, well, I guess I just get food stuck in my throat forever. I guess I just choke on my water forever, choke on my own saliva forever. But that has not happened all week. Um, and it feels good. I can like eat food and not have to think about it. I can eat whatever I want. I can pop three pills at a time and not get them stuck in my throat. I've had pills stuck in my throat for days in the past, but that's not happening. Like I'm feeling good. And I'm curious, like I do notice though, when I was doing my hair, I had a wash day this week. Curly hair wash day is no joke. It's a lot of arms up. I still had to take breaks when I was doing my hair, um, but it was better. And I'm curious what's gonna happen when I try to like walk and be more active. I am gonna talk to my neurologist. I have a telehealth appointment with him and tell him all these side effects I'm getting and then hopefully figure out another way to lessen the side effects. Cause the first side effects, y'all saw me in the ER, it was, the, it was really bad. It was really bad. Uh, and then the second one, the side effects were exactly the same but more mild. So I hope that we can continue on this trajectory of the side effects eventually getting more mild and then going away. Um, because if it works this quickly, um, I want it. <laughs> um, it just, it feels good to have a little slice of normalcy. Even if it's literally just, hey, I don't choke on food, like you wouldn't think that that was a big deal. But if any of you are struggling with the same thing, you know it's a huge fucking deal. So it's the little things in life. So I'm at work, literally crying, happy tears. Um, and this is gonna seem so silly for anybody who's not familiar with MG, but um, I just went out to my car to get something and I took the elevator down, just like I always do, but my legs were feeling really good and I took the steps up and I went up two flights of steps and I'm okay <laughs> and I have it. I've been taking the elevator up to my job for six months because I haven't been able to walk up the two flights of steps. Um, and yeah, I just walked up steps and it seems so silly and so small, but I'm really excited about it because I haven't been able to do that. <laughs> so I thought that was worth sharing since my IVIG experience has just been so shitty overall, but like it's working. It's really working. Um, yeah, so that's it. I just wanted to share.
so this is the final IVIG update of this video and there are two things that I want to talk about now that we're a solid two weeks out from the last infusion. I want to talk about the side effects and I want to talk about the benefits. So the side effects, something I actually haven't mentioned in this video, the side effects sound a lot like a condition called aseptic meningitis, which was actually mentioned to me in the ER after all the brain bleeding tests and all that were negative. Um, and the neurologist, I believe it was a neurologist who I talked to said, the only way to diagnose is a spinal tap. And at that point I had already been at the ER for 15 hours. And he said, the spinal tap will make your headache worse. Do you want to get it? And I said, sir, you better send me home. <laughs> So I didn't get it, so I don't know if that's what I actually had. However, symptoms of aseptic meningitis that, to my understanding, are massive throbbing, splitting, migraine, sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound, nausea, stiff neck, um, all of those things together are exactly the side effects that I experienced both months after IVIG. The only way to diagnose is the spinal tap, and obviously I didn't get that, and the second month I didn't go to the ER for the symptoms. Um, but after reading a lot of people's IVIG experiences in MG support groups and things, seems like people's IVIG death headaches are headaches and migraines, and they don't have all of those other things associated with it. I had a fever in the uh, ER, and that's one of the things that doctor mentioned, the fact that I had a fever and a stiff neck is generally a sign of aseptic meningitis. So the more I think about it and the more I read about it, I don't think that I'm getting headache side effects from IVIG, I think I have gotten aseptic meningitis twice. But we'll see what happens next time. I still have to talk to my neurologist as well uh, about the reaction to the second time. So now the benefits of the IVIG, now that we're two weeks out. I am still not having issues with getting food stuck in my throat. I can still pop multiple pills at the same time. I don't have any issues drinking. Um, one thing that is very different that I haven't mentioned in this video, I was getting breathing issues that felt very different from asthma. I've had asthma for like 30 years, but I was giving like a heavy sensation in my chest and I would notice that I would just like not be breathing sometimes. Like I would just exhale and that's it. Like forget to inhale and I would have to mentally think myself through breathing and that has been happening for the last maybe month or so and that has not happened at all at the last two weeks. I was able to shovel snow, which was awesome, and then drove to work and worked and was okay. I did Pilates for the first time in six months. I've been trying to do a little stretching here and there that was really difficult and I couldn't do it for long, but I actually did real Pilates. Did I overdo it? Yes. Did I feel like a wet noodle afterwards? Yes. But I could physically do it, which I wasn't able to before. Another thing I've noticed is that I'm not as affected by heat. So heat is a big MG trigger. Usually if I have a space heater on at work, my legs get really weak and I have trouble getting up from my chair. That hasn't happened. I've been cooking, chopping vegetables. Usually the chopping action will make my wrist and my forearm sore. I'm, I'm making soup and dinner again and that's fine. Um, I feel almost normal. I can tell it's still not okay. Like when I woke up this morning, my arms were really heavy and really, I kind of got that like tingly sensation that went away with the Mestinon and I was able to like make tea and I was okay. Um, but I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good. So the story had a happy ending. I'm glad after all of the IVIG drama that I did not expect, I expected this to be a super simple video. Uh, so thank you if you watched the whole thing. I hope it was helpful. I hope if you are going through your own IVIG experience or someone you know is that this was helpful. Um, and yeah, that's all I got. So if there's anything else about MG that you're curious about seeing my experience, I have a video coming about my MG experiencing diagnosis, one about my medication, this one about IVIG, one about my thymectomy, and then I'm thinking of doing a second IVIG one once I've had a couple of rounds in. We'll see if anybody's interested and also how I'm feeling and if I'm in the hospital again. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.